So now we are starting with step number one in details. Uh, if the message contains m number of bits, the data bits, and r number of redundant bits are added. The m can be 4, 5, 6, 8, 16, 32, any number of data bits. So we must add some additional bits denoted by r. Since r bits can indicate 2 power r states, 2 power r must be at least equal to m plus r plus 1. So the formula or the equation should be 2 power r greater than or equal to m plus r plus 1. Now let's say we have 4 data bits. So for 4 data bits we must, so for 4 bits, for 4 bits we must have the equation like this. Now if we put 3 here then this equation would be satisfied. It would be 8 greater than or equal to Eight. Let's say we have seven data bits. So for seven, we must provide a value of R that satisfies this equation. So here I must give four to power. So it would be this is greater than or equal it would be 16 greater than or equal to this one should be 4 here for R. So it's giving 12. So for 7 bits the value of R should be Four, we, we can provide four redundant bits. For eight, it is also possible four bits. And even for nine additional bits, we can give four, for nine data bits, we can give four redundant bits. And it would be up to 11, 11 data bits plus four redundant bits plus 1 should be less than or equal to 2 power 4 and this equation is satisfied. So for 11 data bits up to 11 data bits we can give 4 redundant bits. So in this way, we, we can calculate the number of redundant bits. Let's say we have 30 data bits plus this would be R plus 1. So if we give the value of R equal to 6 then it would be 2 power 6 this is equal to 64 and here 6 so this would give us 37 so 37 is less than or equal to 2 power 6 which is 64 and if we give this r uh, a value equal to 5 then uh, the the equation would be 32 is greater than or equal to 37 so that is wrong so so the least value for r is 6 for m equal to 30. The next step or the step number 2 is about the positioning of redundant bits. The r redundant bits placed at bit positions of powers of 2 that is 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3 and so on. 
So the position for bits would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and so on. They are referred in the rest of the text as R1 at first position, R2 at position number 2, R3 at position number 4 and so on. So if we look into the example here, position number 1 is given to R1, position number 2 for R2, position number 4 for R3, then position number 8 would be for R4, position number 16 would be for R5 and so on. Next is step number 3, calculating the values of each redundant bit. So the value of bit is shown that it would be either 0 or 1. Each redundant bit R i is calculated as the parity which we usually uh, take as even parity based upon its bit position. It covers all bit position whose binary representation includes a 1 in the ith position except the position for R i. Now here if we look into this example, actually we will explain this ex example later. So here at position 1 we have 1 here, position 1, the, the, I am talking about the bits for these positions. So here we have 1 and here we have 1. So these positions are for R1 whose first bit is 1. If you look into R1, it has 1, 3, 5 and 7. Now if you look into the third bit that is for R3 here and for 6 and 7 we have third bit equal to 1. So R3 is taking 4, 5, 6 and 7. 4 is actually taken by R itself, the redundant bit and these are the data bits. So R1 is the parity bit for all data bits in position whose binary representation includes a 1 in the least significant position or least significant bit LSB excluding the first this one is actually R1. So R1 is taking 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. R1 is taking 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. Because the bits for these positions uh, are like uh, their first bit is equal to 1. Then for R2, the binary bit for all data bits in position whose binary representation includes a 1 in the second position from right except 2, 2 is actually for R2, then we have 3, 5, 3, sorry, 3, 6, 7, 10, 11 and so on. Now if you look into this example here, second bit. This one is second bit, then this one second bit and second bit. So for R3, so for, for R2, we have position number 3, second bit is 1, position number 6, second bit is 1 and position number 7 whose second bit is equal to 1. Similarly for R3, the parity bit uh, in position whose binary representation includes 1 in the third position. So we will have 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15 and from 20 to 23 and so on. And for R4, we will check the position number 4 in the bits. For R5, we will check the position number 5 in the bits from, from right side. So these are the th three steps in the Hamming code algorithm. 
now we will have an example calculate Hamming code word we can we can also call this thing the the calculated thing as the code word now this this is actually the code word data plus the parity bits this is called code word so calculate the Hamming code word for 1010 10, this is the data which has to be transmitted so if we put this data in the table so we have d1 d2 d3 and d4 so these are the four data bits now we are going to calculate the Hamming code for this data or Hamming code word for this given data step number one calculation of the number of redundant bits how many R's are required for these four bits so m is equal to 4 we have 4 bits so m is equal to 4 so the formula is 2 power r should be greater than or equal to m plus r plus 1 so here we are putting the values in the formula we have m equal to 4 so what would be the value of r so this 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 equation uh, should be satisfied the least value for r not only the value the least value so we are giving r equal to 3 so if we put r equal to 3 we we satisfy this equation we can also put r equal to 4 but that that would not be the least value so we must put the least value so according to this step we must have three redundant bits r1 r2 and r3 are required for four bits that are denoted by m so the next step is positioning the redundant bits so here we we are giving positions to r1 r2 and r3 now if you now if you look into the step number two the positions for bit is the power of two so the positions should be one then two four 8 16 32 64 128 and so on so here the positions are 1 2 4 according to this example or according to the provided four bits if we we have a larger number then r4 should be here at 8 and r5 should be at 15 then step number 3 we are giving bits to these positions so here we have three bits for each since we are using three r's so the bits would be three if we have r4 here somewhere then here we must give four bits so for r1 we must look into the first bit the first bit in all these positions so if the first bit is equal to 1 then that that is a part of or that is considered by r1 so this one is r1 itself here first bit is equal to 1 3 then this is equal to 0 this is not the part of r1 this one is equal to 1 so this is for r1 and this one is equal to 1 this is also for 1 so r1 includes third position fifth position and seventh position because here the first bit is equal to 1 in all the positions for r2 we will look into the second position so this one position is equal to 1 for number 3 and this one is also equal to 1 this one is also equal to 1 for 6 and 7 so for R2 we will have 3 6 7 for R3 we, we look into the third position so it should be equal to 1 so this one and this one and this one 
five, six, seven are included with R3. If we have R4, then we must look into the fourth, fourth position of bit. We will have we will have four bits, so we will look into the fourth position for R4. If we have in any example, then we will look into fourth position and put those values with R4. Now, if we look into these parities R1, R2, and R3, these can be represented by a diagram. So here we have R1, this one is actually P1, R1. We can also use R, R, P, both, both are possible. So if we look into R1, 1, 3, 5, and 7 are present in R1. In R2, we have 2, 3, 7, 6. Now here we have one interesting thing. 1 is only present in R1. 2 and 4 they are also only only present in R2 and R3 respectively. Now if we look into file, so this is present in R1 and R3 only but not in the all and also not present in this one R2. If we look into 7, this one is present in all the three blocks. So by looking into this diagram, we can easily know that which bit is present in which block or blocks and in which blocks are a single block, it is not present. So each bit can be identified very easily. So what we do? we add parity bits to R1, R2 and R3. Now if you look into data, it is 1, 0, 1 and 0. This one is data. So we, we, we need even parity. So for 3, 5 or 7, we have bits 1, 1 and 0. 3, 5, and 7 we have 0 1 and 1 from right side and to make it even even or even parity we must put the value of r1 equal to 0 so this 0 is added then for r2 we will look into the values of 3 6 7 3 6 and 7 and put the bits here 100 zero, zero, this is 1 then 0 and 0 and then it just its parity to it just its uh, uh, even parity so for r we are giving 1 so if we put 1 then it would be even parity now the number of ones here is now e1 and we put r2 equal to 1 after that, for R3, we are looking into 5, 6, and 7. So the bits for 5, 6, and 7 are 1, 0, and 1. So these are already even. No need to put 1 here. So we are giving 0 to R3. So this, this thing is the code word calculated by using Hamming code algorithm. So the data to be sent is 1010. And after the entire procedure of Hamming code or the Hamming uh, code algorithm generation, uh, this, this data will be transmitted. This is the code word generated by the Hamming code algorithm. This one is the data. This one is the Hamming code word. And receive data, for example, uh, let's say is this one. Now, if you look into this data, it has an error. This one bit is different from the send. And we can say this, that we can say that this this is a, a single bit error. Now let's check how this error can be detected and corrected at the receiving side. So the received bits are these. 
and now we are detecting and correcting the error if we put these bits in order from 1 to 7 then we will have r1 r2 and r3 here so for r1 we have 1357 as we did at the center side r2 we have 2367 and r3 has 4567 in r1 there are one there are one then one and for three we have zero and zero so we have one one zero zero even parity is required this one is correct for two we have three three six seven so here we have seven this one six this one and three this one and two so this one is not even so it is not correct it means r2's value is given in odd parity or not even parity for r3 we have 567 so it should be even it should give us even parity for 567 we have 111 so 111 here and the r3 is 0 this one is also not even parity the number of ones is odd not even so this test is also wrong now first one is correct r1 is correct r2 and r3 are wrong so here we can detect this in a very simple way by having a question which bit is present in R2 and R3 only? By only, we mean that it shouldn't be in R1, R2, and 3. It shouldn't be in, one, in R1 and R3 or uh, in individual R's. So here, if we look into R2 and R3, here we have R3 and r2 so this one is r2 and this one is r3 two blocks so which bit is present in r1 and sorry r2 and r3 let's say we take seven this this is present in both but this this one is also present in one so we cannot take seven Let's say we take uh, 3, it's only in R2 and R1, it's not correct. Now, if we take the bit position number 6, it is present in R3 and R2, but not in R1 and also not in all these, or also not only in R3, or only in R2. So, th this is the only bit which is present in R3 and R2. So, bit number 7 sorry bit number six is the only bit which is present in r2 and r3 now if we change this bit to zero then we will correct the received data this data can be processed by the receiver now let's correct this bit so if I make it 0 then it would be 0 here and this this would not be wrong this would be correct and also this would be 0 because 6 is 0 now so this one is also not wrong and this one is now correct so three cases are correct it means that bit number 6 or bit at position 6 got corrupted and this one can be repaired or can be corrected by looking into the values of these parity bits or these redundant bits. This was all about the error correction. So in this lecture, we started with the, the error detection. Actually, this was a sort of revision for our previous lecture. So we first looked into the single bit error, burst error, error detection mechanism, then VRC, LRC, CRC and checksum. 
we also studied about the parity, parity bit and after that we started with error correction then we have two approaches the backward error correction and forward error correction backward means the retransmission of data from the sender side acknowledge the sender that the data is received or not the data received is corrupted or not and according to that the sender will retransmit the data if required and forward error correction is the error correction at the receiving end there is no need of retransmission some additional data is sent with the some additional data which, which is capable for error correction is sent with the original data and with the help of that additional data the receiver corrects the detected errors if there are any then we looked into the block coding and convolutional coding in block coding we have Hamming codes so we studied about the Hamming codes in Hamming code we have three steps we also looked into these three steps and took an example and according to these three steps we processed this example and this was all about the error correction I hope you will do study this by yourself and if you have any question you can put your comments in the KCMS thank you